Hey, what's up everyone? This is Aaron from Studio 3B. So today I bricked my Microsoft Surface Pro first generation and I tried everything to get it to turn back on, but it's just a fail. But I did manage to get Mac OS installed for a brief time and I thought you might enjoy this video for what it's worth. All right guys, so I have this uh, Microsoft Surface here and since I don't know anything about it, I figured I'd try to boot off of a USB and run Linux for a second just to see what the architecture is. Reason being, I need to know what it is so I can do the config.plist for the Mac OS install. So I need to know if this is a Haswell or anything like that. There is a USB port right here and I hope I can get it to boot from that. It looks like it's going right into Windows. Let's see if we can get to the BIOS. All right. Well, first things first, I need to look up how to get to the BIOS of this. Okay, I figured out that I need to turn it off all the way, and then I need to press and hold the volume up button with the power button. Not off yet. Well, that didn't work. Let's try it one more time. Okay, so it looks like I reached the BIOS. Uh, TPM is enabled. Secure boot control. Uh, I really just want to boot to Linux and see what the architecture is, but let's see. Secure boot is enabled. Delete all secure boot keys. I should probably do that if I'm gonna. All right, so it says, do you want to just delete all secure boot keys? I think I'm gonna do that. I think it did that, okay. Let's see, trusted platform modules enabled. How do I get to the boot menu? Exit setup. I wonder if it's going to uh, allow me to boot from the USB. I have to learn how to boot from a USB on here. Hey guys, so I just kept trying to figure out why this USB wasn't booting. Then I realized it wasn't UEFI. So I went to the computer and tried to create an installer just straight from Mac OS using Ivy Bridge configuration. So I did a little research and that's probably good to do before you start a project like this. Uh, the Surface 2012, it's 2012 because when I got to the BIOS earlier, I saw that it said 2012 in the BIOS. So I Googled 2012 Surface. This is, this is actually the original Surface to ever come out in the world. And I found out that the CPU is an i5 third gen. So that is Ivy Bridge. I Googled that. Ivy Bridge is no go for Ventura. Sorry. So yeah, so I think we're going to have to do uh, Monterey. First thing I'm going to do is just create the USB. All right, I'm going to take this USB drive and I'm going to erase it and hope I'm not going to need it again. Mac OS extended journal and I'll call it USB drive. All right, making the installer Mac OS users. Here's the available software. I'm going to want Monterey. So now we're just going to wait for this to download. Okay guys, it looks like I got a download successful for Monterey. So let's see if I can find that. Ah, there it is. On array. So there's a command to put it right on the USB drive. We just gotta follow the steps. All right, let's just let this sit here for a few minutes. I think it's gonna take a little while. Hey guys, so this part I never recorded the actual building of the EFI, but uh, I just wanted to briefly go over some of the things I touched on to get this Surface to boot. SSDTEC and PNLF and XOZ. I created those in Windows. So I ended up installing Windows on the Surface right on top of the OS that I did not have access to. So I installed Windows and logged in and I got everything going on there. And then I ran SSDT time to get my SSDTs run correctly and also find out some information about the graphics, which is an HD 4000 Intel graphics. So that's good to know. That helped me with my configuration. So going down here, I got the delete CPU PM true and this is true as well. That's based on the Ivy Bridge laptop guide. Going down here, I set all the config variables as the guide would say. Uh, device properties, I ended up using 04006601 for the platform ID, which is working for me. And these are the numbers I set for these frame buffer values. Then I got Lilu Kext, USB inject all, which is just works on that one USB port. Uh, I never got the mapping working before it bricked. Virtual SMC, of course, whatever green. I2C, that helps with the keyboard and the mouse. Brightness keys, I don't think that did anything. 
EC enabler, battery manager, light sensor, SMC processor, SMC Super IO, Voodoo I2C. This is all a bunch of other stuff. Okay, great. So that's all here in the Kex. I got all those in there. And drivers, HFS plus open runtime, ACPI I just showed you. Uh, and tools, I did use clean NVRAM tool to help me with certain things. So boot args are debug was on and I tried this iGraphics blur boot arg to try to get the screen to not be faded. That didn't seem to work. I never got that far. For the Symbios, I used MacBook Pro 11.2. I think MacBook Air also worked. Don't think that made a big difference. And that's about it for the config. I can go into greater detail, but I don't think you need to be bored like that. So we're making progress. We're getting to the installer here. That's good. Okay, we made it to the installer, which is good news. So I ended up going through the installer. I formatted my disk and installed Mac OS. Okay, it's still going. It says there's about 29 minutes left. I'm thinking it's not an SSD, but it's going. All right, so I got the reboot happening and it's installing and it has all this text and it's really awesome. Okay, I just selected Macintosh HD from the, from the picker and there goes the dim screen one more time. But the nice thing about this is that the keyboard all of a sudden works. This keyboard works. It wasn't working at first, so I externalized the keyboard through this hub here. So I plugged in my keyboard through there. But now this keyboard works and I'm getting excited. Also the touchscreen was working on the installer, which is very exciting. So let's just see if I can get Apple to work for me on a Surface. All right guys, so I made it to the installer which is pretty cool. I don't have a mouse because I disconnected that. Let's see if I could just use the tap screen here. That seems to work. I just got to get down to US, United States. Continue, continue, not now. How do you want to connect? Okay, so I guess I don't have Wi-Fi. That's going to be a problem. So let's see here. I think I knew that the Wi-Fi is going to be a problem. I'm going to have to insert a wireless dongle to the hub here and see if I can get that to work. I just said dongle. Okay, so I got this TP-Link AC600. Got it only because it says it's Mac supported and I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to try it. The uh, Wi-Fi adapter is not being recognized out of the box. Uh, but there is a download site that you can get the driver. Let's hope that works. I'm going to have to say no internet for now and get that driver over here on a USB. Okay, one thing I'm noticing is that the keyboard now does not work anymore. So I have to go get my external keyboard. Okay, I got Big Sur installed on this Surface and now I need to get post install steps to work. The, the screen is very dim. I need to get the darkness or the white to show. All right, that's a no-go on the wireless USB. So I'm gonna have to try something else. Okay, so I booted up to ArchBang from a different USB and I'm doing this so I can get into the system and just see what kind of hardware I'm using. I have already overwritten Windows so I originally used Windows to do the SSD T time and get my SSD TEC and, and the other ACPI drivers. Now I need to figure out the backlight situation and I need to figure out the Wi-Fi situation. So I'm going to use the command line and try to get that information. Okay, according to LSUSB, this is the Realtek 8153 Wi-Fi controller with gigabit ethernet. So I wonder if that is it. So let me try the Realtek drivers one more time. Okay guys, I got Wi-Fi working. Um, it's not the onboard Wi-Fi, it's that TP-Link 
that I bought and I showed you earlier. Um, turns out I had to install Chris 1111's driver that works with Realtek. And uh, yeah, that works. What was my speed? I forgot. Uh, yeah, that's not too bad. 152 and 127. You know, it's a gigabit connection on the WAN, but I guess 152 is not bad. All right, now I gotta fix the screen. This is really pale and really hard to see things. So I am going to work on that next. Okay, so I didn't fix the backlight, but I did do the manual version of PNLF SSDT, but uh, that didn't seem to do anything. Plus it was already set correctly. So it's gotta be something else, maybe device properties, but let's take a look at it one more time. Hey guys, so today I bricked my surface it's the end of the story for this guy. It's just not turning on. I've tried charging it for several hours, holding the power button down for 20 seconds like the manual says. The good news is I got Mac OS running on this Surface. It is possible. It was a nice project while I had it. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and as always, happy hacking.